Hello and welcome to our new lecture of the 16th century poetry presented to you by Dr. Ala, a lecturer at the Department of English Language, the College of Arts of Al Iraqiya University. This lecture is presented as part of the Google Classroom activity. Therefore, if you would like to raise any question, please comment on the video in our classroom and I will try to answer all questions as soon as possible. Without further ado, let's get started. Today we are going to discuss the fifth poem by Thomas White, which is entitled as The Hind. Sir Thomas White was born in 1503 and died in 1542, was a 16th century English politician, ambassador and lyric poet, credited with introducing the sonnet to English literature. فكان يشغل أكثر من مكان مهمة في المملكة المتحدة حيث كان سياسيا وسفيرا وكاتبا وشاعرا. He was born at Alinton Castle near Maidstone in Kent. Though the family was originally from Yorkshire, White was educated at St. John's, Cambridge and became a member of the court circle of Henry VIII, where he seems to have been popular and admired for his attractive appearance and skills in music, language and arms. White's fortune at court fluctuated, however, and his association with the Balaam family, as well as a rumoured affair with Anne Boleyn, likely contributed to his first arrest and imprisonment. علاقته مع آن بولن ربما تكون هي السبب في كتابة هذه القصيدة وهي كانت في الحقيقة سببا في زجه في السجن. In 1536, he was again arrested in 1541 after the execution of his ally. Thomas Cromwell. During his career, he served a number of diplomatic missions and was knighted in 1537. But his fame rests chiefly on his poetic achievement, particularly his songs. His poems are unusual for their time in carrying a strong sense of individuality. Adda أمر علاقته مع آن إلى اعتقاله لمرتين الأولى كانت عام 1536 أما الثانية فكانت عام 1541 قد خدم شاعرنا في بعثات دبلوماسية كثيرة ولكنه اكتسب شهرته بنوع القصيدة التي يكتبها وتفرده المطلق في صياغة إحساسها وكما تعودنا في المحاضرات السابقة فسوف أقوم بقراءة القصيدة ومن ثم ننتقل إلى الشرح التفصيلي لمقاطع هذه القصيدة The Hind Who's so less to hunt? I know where is a hind But as for me, alas, I may no more The vain travail hath wearied me so sore I am of them that farthest cometh behind Yet may I by no means my weird mind drove from the deer, but as she fleeth and fall, fainting I follow, I leave off therefore. Sithens in a net I seek to haul the wind. Who list her hunt, I put him out of doubt, as well as I may spend his time in vain. And graven with diamonds and letters plain, there is written, her fair neck round about. Nolly me, dangere, for Caesar's I am, and wild for to hold, though I seem tame. The first quatrain where the poet asks in the first line if there is anyone who is looking for prey to hunt. كانت سأل الشاعر فيما إذا كان هناك أي صياد يبحث عن فريسة. Because the poet knows a female deer. لأنه كان يعرف ما كان أحدها. In line two, the poet states that he is not going to join the hunt because he accepted his defeat and that the process of his particular day seems to be futile to him. وأن عملية الصيد برمتها كانت تبدو غير مجدية بالنسبة للشاعر. In line number four, the poet states that even if he decided to join, then he will be the last one to do so and his place will come behind all the hunters. Let's move now to 
quatrain number two and see the meaning of it. In the second quatrain, the poet says, Yet may I be no means, my weird mind, draw from the deer, but as she fleeth afore, fainting I follow, I leave off therefore, seedings in a net I seek to hold the wind. In this quatrain, the poet tells us that despite the fact that he is abandoning the hunt, his mind is still attached to that deer and that he cannot stop thinking about it. يخبرنا الشاعر هنا أنه رغم الحقيقة بأن شاعرنا قد ترك وصرف ذهنه عن عملية الصيد إلا أنه لا يزال يفكر بذلك الغزال ولا يستطيع إبعاد تفكيره عنه. But since I kept following the deer for long, I feel faint and powerless. Therefore, I will leave the chase because my hunting is like trying to catch the wind with a net. This means that all his attempts are in vain and he will never be able to catch that deer. ويردف قائلا بأن مهمة صيد هذا الغزال كانت صعبة جدا بالنسبة له ومتعبة. لذلك أحس بأن جدوى البحث ومطاردة هذا الغزال كأنها عملية محاولة مسك الهواء بشبكة أي عديمة الجدوى ولا يمكن أن تتحقق. In the third quatrain, the poet made another repetition to emphasize the idea of the hunt when he says, Who list her hunt? I put him out of doubt, as well as I may spend his time in vain, and graven with diamonds in letters plain, there is written her fair neck round about. Nolly me tangere, for Caesar's I am, and wilds for to hold, though I seem tame. In this sestet, the poet assures the reader that for all the reasons I mentioned above, I should surrender and accept my defeat, that I will never be able to hunt this particular deer. يذكر شاعرنا هنا في المقطع الثاني من القصيدة بأنه للأسباب الآنفة الذكر كلها دعتني أن أبتعد عن فكرة صيد هذا الغزال. For those who are really thinking of adding this deer to their hunting list, I can assure you that you will waste your time just like me. For well, there is a necklace on the deer made out of diamonds and has been engraved with the following Latin phrase Noli me tangere Do not touch me because I belong to the Caesar and also am so dangerous despite that I seem easy to get but do not be fooled. يذكر شاعرنا أن هناك قلادة على رقبة هذا الغزال وعليها عبارة محفورة باللغة اللاتينية وتعني لا تلمسني لأنني ملك القيصر وأنني خطيرة جدا رغم أني لا أبدو كذلك لذا لا تنخدع بهذا الأمر In literature, an allegory is an extended metaphor in which objects and events told symbolic meanings outside of the literal meanings made explicit in the narrative in White's sonnet, the hunter's pursuit of the hind can be held to represent White's pursuit of Anne Boleyn. هذه القصيدة هي قصيدة رمزية شبهت الغزال بآن بولين. لذلك على طول القصيدة وخلال كل الأبيات عندما يذكر الشاعر الصياد فهو يعني نفسه وعندما يذكر الغزال فهو يعني آن بولين. And the hinds being the property of Caesar can represent the ownership of Anne Boleyn by King Henry VIII. وقوله أن هذا الغزال هو ملك للقيصر يعني هنا أن هذه الفتاة هي خاصة بالملك Henry الثامن. All of the accompanying descriptions of the hunt and the hunter's emotions, then, can be applied to this actual romantic situation. لذلك كل ما يحيط بهذه القصيدة من صيادين وأفكار وصور هي تدور حول محور العلاقة حول محور علاقة الحب بين الشاعر 
وهذه الفتاة تحتوي هذه القصيدة على عدة مواضيع مهمة جدا من ضمنها كوتلي لوف والذي يعني الحب المهذب الذي غالبا ما يقع بين الفرسان والنساء النبيلات We have divine right of kings الحقوق الدينية الألوهية للملك لأن ملوك أنجلترا كانوا يعتبرون نوابا للإله في الأرض We also have obsession which is the deep love of uh, the poet to this woman. Um, in every point of these three topics, you can extend your ideas according to the handouts I presented in the lecture. Now let's move to the poetic devices, which is in the next slide. Let's start with the first one. As we are used to, we will start with the rhyme scheme, which is ABBA, a, B, B, A, C, D, D, C, E, E. The poem has what is known as extended metaphor because the poet compares his beloved to a hind and himself to a hunter. Another metaphor, and seeth in a net, I seek to hold the wind. And it is also irony in the same line since it's mocking those who try to catch wind using a net. Extended metaphor is what is the المستمر المطول. لأننا منذ بداية القصيدة ونحن نرى الشاعر يقارن بين حبيبته والغزال ويقارن نفسه مع الصياد فهذا ما يسمى ب the extended metaphor we have irony also الايروني اللي هو سخرية لأن الشاعر يقول حالي كحال من يحاول مسك الهواء مستخدما شبك we have also alteration in so sore and also in fleth for fainting a fellow. This gives an indication of the long and enticing process that the poet had to follow in order to hunt the deer. هذه الالتريشن اللي موجود يعطينا إحساس بطول المدة طول فترة محاولات الشاعر الإمساك أو صيد هذا الغزال وكم هي متعبة هذه العملية. We also have repetition. When it says, whose list her to hunt? This shows the high desire of the poet to win the deer, but all his attempts are futile. هذا التكرار يدلل على كثرة محاولات الشاعر صيد هذا الغزال. ولكن للأسف كل محاولاته قد باءت بالفشل. Finally, we have personification. Finally, we have personification. The deer, the hind, stands for a woman. هنا لدينا personification. عندما شبه الشاعر محبوبته بالغزال إلى هنا تنتهي معظم الأدوات الأدبية في هذه القصيدة هذه ليست كل الأدوات ولكن uh, I tried to um, limit the main or the most important ones in here إلى هنا أتينا إلى نهاية هذه المحاضرة وإن شاء الله أراكم في محاضرات uh, لاحقة في حفظ الله ورعايته